Hi, this is Steve back with you. Today, we're gonna to talk about the four turning tendencies of airplanes. We oftentimes hear it called the four left turning tendencies, but that's not always the case. So it's better to summarize it as four turning tendencies. The first one we're gonna talk about on the four turning tendencies today is torque, also probably better known as torque reaction. That's what the handbook of aeronautical knowledge calls it, or the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. And, and we're gonna talk about torque reaction. We have to understand that there's torque in the air and torque on the ground. So it's pretty straightforward, torque in the air. As, as the propeller turns, we get an action in one direction. But then, because of that, Newton's third law, we get an equal and opposite reaction in another direction. So in the air, the propeller turning clockwise causes a reaction that the airplane wants to turn counterclockwise. That's what this drawing right here is all about. Now, the way we counter that is really the manufacturer does that through typically one of two ways. They go back to the vertical fin and they offset that vertical fin just slightly to take care of torque during or torque reaction during flight. Another thing they do that's probably more common is when they mount the engine, they mount it at a slight angle. It, if you looked at the front to the back on a stepladder, you oftentimes see that the line is slightly canted, maybe one or two degrees. And that's how the manufacturer does it to account for torque reaction during straight and level flight. As we're uh, climbing and going down the runway, let's say we're at the end of the runway and we apply power to an airplane. As we go farther and farther down the runway, the torque, is, the torque when we start off is really affecting us. So what's going on is the airplane propeller, we'll just kind of draw it out here, the propeller is turning this way from the pilot seat. But the, it's countered by a torque reaction that instead goes this way with the arrow. So what that does is that causes a downward pressure on the left wheel, the main. So you get the downward pressure on the main and that downward pressure that comes right here on this wheel, that causes a ground friction that causes that side to drag back somewhat. The other side isn't going to have as much, as much ground friction on it. It's not going to drag the plane back as much. So bottom line, we, we go to the end of the runway. Let's say we're holding our brakes for a short field or, or maybe we're just rolling. We apply full power. The, the, the propeller is turning to the right as we're in the pilot seat. The aircraft is wanting to counter it with a torque reaction rolling to the left. It puts more pressure on the left tire, which causes a bit of ground friction and tends to pull the airplane to the right or to the left, excuse me, causing us to need right rudder, pulling the airplane to the left. As you, as you read through the, the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge is talking about, they say, there's many variables that cause this. The size of the engine, the size of the propeller, how big the airplane is, and how much contact is with the ground surface. So that is torque and torque reaction. The second thing that we do here is called the corkscrew effect. That's the second turning tendency. Spiraling slipstream, also known as corkscrew effect by the FAA's uh, PHAC, Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, uh, what it is, is the airplane propeller is going to the right and the slipstream uh, from the propeller is spiraling around the airplane. So as it spirals around the airplane, it actually hits, hits the vertical fin on the left side. When it hits it on the left side, it causes the airplane to want to yaw to the left. So it hits the left side behind the center of gravity, causing the airplane to yaw to the left. But it also, because it hits it up on, the, on this vertical fin as well, it hits it right there, and we have a longitudinal axis that goes through this airplane, it causes the airplane to roll to the right. So there's a slight right roll, which essentially is probably just countering torque. So if you go to the, the P-Hack and you read about that, you'll see that it tells us left yaw, right roll that counters torque. That's spiraling slipstream. The third turning tendency 
um, given to us by the FAA and the and the PHAC is actually called uh, it's actually called asymmetric disc loading, also known as P factor. Um, the downward blade on the normal we haven't start we haven't put an angle attack on this yet. So here's an airplane propeller with both sides pulling. There we go. We bo have both propellers, the downward and the upward blade, that's creating thrust. But as soon as this airplane goes down the runway, breaks ground with, with lift and it's, it's rising up, what's going to happen is this downward blade gets a bigger bite. And that causes this, this upward blade right here to have a, a smaller bite or a smaller angle attack. So it's something more like this. So the downward, the downward one gets a bigger angle attack, we could say bigger bite a lot of times than the, than the upward one. And we end up with, with vectors like this. Right side has uh, more, more force on that side of the prop than the left side because it has a larger angle attack, the bigger bite. And then what you end up with is an airplane that tends to, to want to start doing this on us. So we need to add right rudder on takeoff to counter the uh, P factor caused from the downward blade creating more force than the upper blade. Gyroscopic precession is mostly uh, all about a tailwheel airplane that's going down the runway. As the tailwheel airplane goes down the runway, shortly thereafter, we raise the tail. And when we raise the tail, it's the same as putting a force on the propeller blade. So if my hand is the propeller turning this way, as I raise that tail up, the pilot raises the tail up, it's the same as putting a force on the top of this propeller. So down the runway we go, raise the tail, force gets put on the top of the propeller right here. However, the, the force always acts 90 degrees ahead, ahead of where it was applied. Down the runway, raise the tail, Apply the force on the top of the propeller when we raise the tail. The propeller is moving once through the 90 degrees, then the force acts instead. The force acts right here. So it tends to, to now take the airplane and turn it this way. So we'll go back through that again. Down the runway, raise the tail, apply the force right here, turning disc, a force react reacts 90 degrees in advance where it was applied so it wants to turn the airplane. So we need a lot of right rudder to counteract gyroscopic precession. Now if we were going down the runway, we did that, we brought the nose, the, the tail up, we're going down the runway, now we're really fast, we're a couple feet above the runway and we decide to yank it off this way, it'd be the same as applying a force to the bottom of the propeller it spins 90 degrees and now it wants to move the airplane this way to the right. So raise the tail, airplane goes left. Yank the nose fast. If we yank the nose fast, airplane goes right. That's gyroscopic precession. Okay, let's take an example of P factor. So right here, this blade is level. This is the downward blade and you can see on this downward blade that we have about one finger width right there of an angle attack. One, one end of my finger right there, angle attack. We're going to go to the right side and show the same thing. So here is the downward blade. As we look at the downward blade, we should see that it has also roughly the same angle of attack. So we hold this there, we have about the same angle attack right there. But watch what happens when we raise this airplane up like it's climbing. So we're gonna put this airplane in a pitch attitude. We've got this airplane now up in the air in a pitch attitude, very similar to what it would be like on a climb out. Now I'll take a look at this angle attack of this, of this climbing side of the propeller. Look at that angle attack, how much it's grown. Now come to the other side of the propeller and notice how small that is. 
So we'll come over here on the, on the climbing, on the ascending blade, put that up against it, there's just virtually nothing there. So you can see, once we're in, once we're in a high angle attack, you can see this climbing blade shrunk to nothing, and this descending blade has a very large angle attack. And that's a good example of P factor. So summarizing the turning tendencies, we went through all of them, ended up with P factor, and you can really see this by using a book, a straight edge, or anything. As you can see, what you gotta do though, is get the nose of the airplane up in the air like you're doing a climb. Oh yeah, and last of all, thanks to Vanna for sitting on the tail, holding it down for us.